Level zero, the night sky feels eternal. Stars flicker, planets glide silently. Nothing seems dangerous, but that's the illusion. Because even in calm, the universe holds its breath. Orbiting Earth right now are thousands of space rocks, most small, harmless, but some, not so much. Every so often, a visitor drifts too close and the calm breaks. These are not bullets, they are hammers. And if one is big enough, it doesn't hit cities. It resets continents. Earth has no immunity from impact, only memory. And space doesn't care about our calendars. Space surveillance systems, like NASA's Planetary Defense Coordination Office, now scan the skies for threats every night because the first step to avoiding extinction is seeing it coming. Level one, you're driving. A streak of light flashes overhead. A shooting star? Not quite. It explodes. A sonic boom shakes windows. Sirens wail. This is a bolide, a meteor that explodes in the atmosphere. And in 2013, one entered over Chelyabinsk, Russia. It was just 20 meters wide, but its airburst injured over 1,500 people. No warning, no crater, just shattered glass and burning sky. Now imagine one twice the size, or 10 times. Small space rocks, tens of meters across, aren't extinction level. But if they hit a city, it's over. Fire, shockwaves, collapse, and we have thousands of them still untracked. Earth's thin atmosphere can only save us so many times. Improved tracking of near-Earth objects down to 10 meters and investing in early warning systems could stop the next Chelyabinsk from becoming the next Hiroshima. Level 2. This one doesn't explode in the upper atmosphere. It hits. And when it does, it digs. It roars. It transforms a landscape in a single breath. In 1908, a space rock roughly the size of a house entered Earth's atmosphere at over 50,000 kilometers per hour. It detonated just above the surface near the Tunguska River in Siberia, Russia, flattening over 2,000 square kilometers of forest. That's the size of a major metro area, gone. No crater, no city. Just 80 million trees blasted outward in a radial pattern, snapped like twigs, scorched at the tips. The object likely measured only 50 to 60 meters wide, but it carried the explosive force of 10 to 15 megatons. That's nearly 1,000 times more powerful than the Hiroshima bomb. And it struck a remote forest, not a city. If it had entered over London, Tokyo, or New York, there'd be no rubble left to clear, no emergency response, just a ring of fire and a memory. These mid-sized impactors are rare, but not rare enough. There are tens of thousands in near-Earth orbit, Many haven't been found. Many approach from the direction of the sun, making them invisible to telescopes. We call them city killers, because that's exactly what they do. And the worst part? We have no current defense system that could intercept one on short notice. Not in weeks, not in days, not in time. That's why missions like NASA's DART, which tested nudging a small asteroid off course in 2022, are so critical not to stop the giants, but to stop the ones that sneak through the cracks, quietly, quickly, and catastrophically. Level 3. Its name is Apophis. Asteroid 99942. It was discovered in 2004, and almost immediately, it terrified astronomers. At first, early orbital models predicted a potential impact in 2029. Its size, over 340 meters wide, longer than the Eiffel Tower is tall, traveling faster than a bullet, carrying the force of hundreds of megatons, enough to destroy an entire country in a single impact. Not a crater, a scar. One that could kick up dust into the stratosphere, darken skies, and cool global temperatures for years. Apophis will miss us, barely. It will pass closer than our geostationary satellites, within 31,000 kilometers of Earth. That's a cosmic near miss, a shot across the bow. But Apophis isn't alone, there are thousands more like it, hidden in elliptical orbits, obscured by the sun, too small to see until they're close, too big to stop once they're near. These are regional killers. If they hit the ocean, they trigger tsunamis that race across continents. If they hit land, they ignite everything for miles, forests, cities, power grids. The dust they lift chokes the upper atmosphere, turning skies dim and crops fragile. The impact may not wipe out humanity, but it could collapse economies, displace millions, and reshape history. 
and the unsettling truth? We've only mapped about 40% of near-Earth objects, NEOs this size. The rest are drifting in cosmic silence. To close that gap, NASA is building the NEO Surveyor, a space telescope specifically designed to detect dark, fast, heat-reflecting asteroids that ground-based telescopes miss. It's not a luxury, it's a race against time, because we don't get a second chance with objects like these. Level 4, size matters, but speed, that's worse. Comets move faster than asteroids, much faster. From the Oort cloud, they come, icy, ancient missiles slingshotted by gravity, and we don't see them coming until they're here. Comet Swift Tuttle, 26 kilometers wide, crosses Earth's orbit every 133 years. It's been called the most dangerous object known to humanity. If it ever hits us, the energy released would be equivalent to 20 million megatons of TNT. The dinosaurs didn't go extinct from fire alone. It was the shockwave, the ash, the darkness. Comets don't just kill land, they kill time, they erase the future. Improved long-term tracking of cometary paths and gravitational interactions with gas giants could give us decades, maybe centuries, to prepare for the unthinkable. Level 5. It's not always the rock that kills. Sometimes it's what it causes. In 1490 AD, the skies over Qingyang, China, turned black. A meteor shower pelted the city. According to records, stones fell like rain, killing thousands. But some believe it wasn't a meteor shower. It was a fragmenting asteroid, breaking up mid-air, creating a shotgun blast of hypervelocity debris. This is the fragmentation event, where one big threat becomes hundreds of small ones. And the result? A sky that rains death. No single crater, just chaos, multiple impacts, fires, structural collapse. The kind of scenario no single bunker could shield you from. Investing in fragmentation modeling and emergency urban shelter systems could make cities more survivable in worst-case multi-impact scenarios. Level 6. Let's leave Earth. Imagine a colony on Mars or a mining operation on the Moon. The sky is silent until it isn't. Micrometeoroids, tiny just millimeters across, but moving at 20 kilometers per second, faster than bullets, and there's no atmosphere to slow them down. Spacesuits? Pierced, habitats, breached. Even satellites in low Earth orbit face this invisible rain. It's not just about extinction-level events. It's about survival in space. Because in space, everything is fragile, and every pebble is a missile. Active shielding systems and Whipple shielding design are now being standard on modern spacecraft because even dust in space can spell doom. Level 7. Back on Earth. But not safe. You're near the coast. You see it. A wall of water, not from the ocean, from the sky. An asteroid hit the ocean, 100 meters wide. The tsunami is over 200 feet tall. It reaches miles inland, inundates ports, cities, nuclear plants. The asteroid didn't need to hit land. The water was enough. In 2013, a study showed over 70% of Earth's asteroid impact threat comes from ocean strikes because water covers most of the planet. And we don't build cities thinking the sea will stand up and walk. But it can, and it will. Developing coastal early warning systems that integrate asteroid impact models could save millions when sea becomes a weapon. Level 8. It's coming, not a rock, a planet. Planetary embryos, roaming the early solar system, collided violently to form the planets we know. And some of them never stopped roaming. Astronomers call them rogue planets unbound by gravity, homeless, ejected from their stars. Now drifting, frozen giants or molten cores across interstellar space. If one enters our system, not an impact. A gravitational massacre, orbits shift, moons destabilize, tides rise, temperatures fall. Earth may not be struck, but it might be flung into deep space, where even light can't keep us warm. Gravitational lensing surveys and deep space infrared telescopes may one day detect rogue planets years in advance, if we're lucky. Level 9. You hear nothing, but the core of the Earth feels everything. This isn't a rock, it's dark matter. Still theoretical, still mysterious. But if a dense clump of it passed through Earth, we might never see it. Only what follows volcanoes erupting worldwide. Magnetic fields distorting the core heating unnaturally fast. 
It wouldn't break Earth. It would unravel it, slowly. Geological chaos, mass extinction from within. Not because something hit us, but because something passed through us. A ghost bullet, fired from the structure of the cosmos itself. Advanced particle detectors like Xenon-1T and the Vera Rubin Observatory are our first lines of defense, searching not just for objects, but for what we can't yet see. Level 10. Sometimes, space doesn't send a rock. It sends a star, neutron stars, dead suns compressed into a city-sized core. They weigh more than the sun, but fit in Manhattan. If one passed through our solar system, gravity would go insane. Planets might slingshot out. Asteroids would rain like shrapnel, but worse, the radiation. A neutron star could emit a gamma-ray burst, the brightest, deadliest light in the universe. If Earth faced one directly, no warning, just atmosphere flash fried, ozone shredded, the sun still shines. But we all burn, no crater, no smoke, just extinction. Monitoring massive stars in their late stage lifespans, especially wolf rayet types, gives us a slim chance to catch a lethal GRB in time to power down and prepare. Level 11. Now imagine an asteroid 10 kilometers wide. You've seen its work before. 66 million years ago, it slammed into Earth. Yucatan, Chicxulub, it triggered earthquakes, wildfires, acid rain, a billion tons of sulfur into the air. Sunlight vanished, photosynthesis died, food chains collapsed, dinosaurs went extinct. 75% of all species, gone. It wasn't just the impact, it was the aftermath, the silence, the dark. It reset evolution and gave us mammals a chance, but it won't give us a second one. That's why DART, Neo Surveyor, and the proposed Gravity Tractor missions are humanity's attempt to ensure the next Chicxulub ends differently. Level 12. Not everything falls from space. Sometimes it erupts from it solar superflares, thousands of times stronger than anything our sun has produced in recorded history. Observed on other stars, they release more energy in seconds than all nuclear weapons on Earth, combined. If the sun did this, satellites vaporized, power grids fried, the ozone layer incinerated, and the Earth bathed in radiation. This is not science fiction, it's astrophysical roulette. Stars like ours have flared before, we just haven't seen ours do it, yet, and we don't know why. Only that if it does, humanity won't have time to blink. Space weather programs and magnetosphere fortification plans are our only hope in the event of a solar temper tantrum too big to survive. Level 13. You're staring at the sky. Suddenly, stars vanish. The sky bends, not with clouds, but with gravity. A black hole has entered the solar system, not large, not even visible, but dense and hungry. At first, nothing changes, then orbits distort. Saturn goes first, then Uranus. The planets begin to spiral inward, not into the hole, into chaos. Even if Earth avoids the singularity, the tidal forces rip it apart, literally. Mountains stretch, oceans rise like whips. The planet becomes a smear of atoms. Black hole detection relies on gravitational wave sensors and wide field surveys. But if it's small and fast enough, we may never know what killed us. Level 14. And then, there's the big one. Not real, not yet, but possible. The hypothetical Planet 9. Five to ten times Earth's mass, orbiting far beyond Pluto, undiscovered. If it exists and it drifts, it could destabilize the entire solar system. Jupiter's moons could scatter. The asteroid belt might collapse inward. Earth's orbit pulled into chaos, glacial pulses, axial tilt, orbit shrinkage, not an impact, a gravitational cancer, slow, invisible, fatal. We'd blame climate change until the sky shifted. High resolution surveys like LSST aim to confirm or rule out Planet Nine's existence because knowing what's out there changes how we survive what's coming. We look up at the stars and see beauty, but hidden behind that beauty, is the universe's raw, ancient power, silent, cold, indifferent, and always watching. The objects we've listed aren't just threats. They're the reminders that Earth is lucky, so far. But luck runs out. Preparedness doesn't have to. Like, share, and subscribe for more deep dives into the threats and wonders of our cosmos. And ask yourself,
If something were heading toward Earth, would we even see it coming? 